All right, we are taking a look at exercise 8-2 from Murox PHP and MySQL. And in this exercise, we're going to get some uh, practice using loops. So we've got some hard-coded values in here, and we're going to use loops to make things uh, a little bit easier for us. Okay, so jumping right into this, uh, step one, run the application. So we've got our application open here, x starts, ch08, exercise 2. And we just load that page up, click on the Process Scores button, and notice that it prints out scores, but our score total and average are still zero. Okay, that's for step two. For step three, click the Process Rolls button, and we notice that we get a maximum rolls and an average rolls. Okay, open the index.php for step four, and we're just gonna glance through this code. Notice in here, we've got our switch statement, and the different cases for the different actions. We've got an action for process scores, which handles the process scores and the process score button. And then we've got a case for process rules and some code for that. And that's what runs when we click the process rules button. Looking through our loop tester, uh, it's got all the display code, the HTML for our form. So you'll see it's got the options for our select button select menu. It's got our buttons uh, for the process roles and the inputs for our scores and such. Okay, so that's great for the first part of the, the exercise. Let's go on into step five. So it's telling us we're working in the index.php and in here we've got a couple to-dos. We've got a to-do note here uh, add the code that cal calculates the score total. That's what we're going to do in step five. We've got a to-do for step six and some more down lower for step eight. Okay, so starting with step five, we're going to add code that calculates the score total. So right now the score total is zero and what happens, we've got this, uh, here's our score total, our score total variable that we set to zero to begin with and we never change that. So as we loop through the scores array that we get, we should just add the current value to a running total. So we keep a running total as we go through the array. So to do that, we just say scores or score total, and we add in the current value, score total plus equals dollar sign s. Okay, so now we've got rid of that to do. Let's go ahead and delete that. And let's test that out. So I go click the Process Scores button, and yes, it shows the scores, but it sho also shows the total and the average now. We didn't have to change anything for the average because we've already got code for the average. It was just relying on the score total, which wasn't changing. Okay, that's good for step five. Let's move on to step six. So we've got this nasty section here where we've got hard-coded checks for the scores to make sure score 0, 1, and 2, or the three inputs that we have, that they're not empty and that they are numeric. Well, we could tidy this up just a little bit. Uh, instead of check hard-coded checks for this, we could use a for loop. Actually, I'll leave that note there until we fix it. So we'll go ahead and start with our for loop syntax for i equals 0, i less than, and I'm going to use count scores instead of just the hard-coded three. That way, if I want to add more inputs in here, I could do that and I wouldn't have to go back and change the code. Okay, so I less than count scores, then we increment i, i plus plus. Okay, great. So what we need to do each time through the loop is do the same check we have been doing. If empty scores, but we're gonna, just gonna check the current item. So scores at i, or not is numeric, scores at i. Then we'll do the same thing we have been doing. We'll set the scores string equal to you must enter valid data and break. Now something interesting happens with our break. So let's take a look at what happens when we do this. So you'll notice I've got the code updated. But when I hit process scores, everything still works. If I have invalid data though, and I hit process scores, I've got 70, I've got a blank entry, and I've got a 90 at the end. The reason is this break 
will just break us out of the for loop. It doesn't actually break us out of the code that's running. So we need to do a little more checking here. We'll keep track of if we have a valid, um, a, if all of our scores are valid, we'll just use a valid variable for, for that. And right now, at, before we run through the loop, valid is true. If we come into this section where we have an error message, then valid is going to be false. We'll set valid to false. And now that we're outside of the loop, we'll have another check. So if not valid, then we will break. Now this break, since it's outside of the for loop, this will actually end our case uh, from the switch statement, and that will end processing of our, our page. So let's see what happens now when I click process scores. Now I get my message. You must enter three valid numbers uh, for scores. Okay, great. So that's good for step six, and we just tested our changes to make sure they work for step seven. Let me put valid numbers back in, and yes, we're still working. Okay, so step seven is good. Now we'll move on to the role processing section with step eight. So we'll scroll down to the process roles section, and step eight says in the index.php file modify the code that processes the roles so it uses a for loop as the outer loop instead of a while loop. So we've got a while loop here. We've got a note that tells us what we're doing to do. We're changing this while loop into a for loop. And as we, as we know from reading the book, we can change any while loop into a for loop or any for loop into a while loop. So this is just a practice of converting the two. So you do our for syntax again, for count equals zero, uh, count, we'll use the same comparison, count less than 10,000, and we'll increment count. So since we're incrementing count here, we no longer have to increment it down here. Go ahead and take that out. Now we've got our loop here. Our condition's part of our for loop, so we don't need that anymore. We set count to zero earlier, so we could take this line out. I'm just going to leave it alone for now. But we set count to zero again, and we use it later down in the, the, uh, the calculation. So that should be good. I'm going to go ahead and save that and check how, that this is still running. So I'll click process roles, and yes, it's still running and calculating those averages. Okay, step nine. In the loop tester file, use a for loop to display the option tags for the drop-down list instead of hard coding six option tags. So we've got this section. Oh, come on, load. There we go. Our loop tester, we've got six option values here, and we've got a to-do note again. But we want to use a loop to display these instead of um, hard coding the options. So we'll go ahead and do that with PHP. And with PHP 4, i equals 1, i less than or equal to 6, i plus plus. I'm going to use the alternate PHP syntax, and then to end that we need to end 4. Okay, and then what do we have inside this loop? We have, we print out these options and we print out the values, so PHP echo i. And we'll use that again inside. So in this case, the value and the, the value that shows up to the, the user are the same thing. That's why I've got the echo i and echo i again. OK, and we can get rid of our to-do note, because now we've done it. OK, so hit process roles. So now this is loading from uh, our, our for loop. And it still works. We can pick different numbers, and there we go. So we test changes to make sure that they work correctly. Yes, we just did that, and we also noted that the, the dropdown is still good. Just to make sure this is working, let's change this number and go to 7 instead. Uh, you do have to reload the page to see the updates, and yes, we are going to 7. Okay, so that's great for 8-2.